Hi! Welcome! In this video, we are going to solve the Convert Celsius to Fahrenheit coding challenge from Free Code Camp's curriculum. We will analyze and solve the challenge, and then we will test our code. Are you ready? Let's begin! I'm Estefania, and it's great to have you here. This challenge is part of the JavaScript Algorithms and Data Structures certification. Let's start by analyzing what we have right here in the description. The challenge is called convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we know that we will have to convert units of temperature. The formula to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit is the temperature in Celsius times nine divided by five plus 32. Let's analyze this sentence a little bit because this is essential to implement our solution. We're going to convert units of temperature, Celsius to Fahrenheit. And the description is giving us that formula that we have to use to make the conversion. Times means multiplication here. And then we have to add 32. So that would be this formula you can see right here. The temperature in Celsius multiplied by nine and divided by five, and then we add 32 to that result. That is exactly what we have to implement in our JavaScript code. Then we see specific instructions. They say you're given a variable Celsius that we can see right here in the code, in the initial code that FreeCodeCam provides. And that variable Celsius represents a temperature in degrees Celsius. We have to use the variable Fahrenheit that is already defined. We have it right here, defined with the LED keyword. And we have to assign it the Fahrenheit temperature that is equivalent to the given Celsius temperature. So we take degrees Celsius and we have to convert that into Fahrenheit. Use the formula mentioned above in this sentence, the formula that you can see right here on the right, to help convert the Celsius temperature to Fahrenheit. This initial part of the analysis of the situation is very important because now we know exactly what we have to do, what data we have to work with, degrees Celsius, and what value we should return from the function. In this case, that would be the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. And then we find some tests. If we provide these values as input to the function as arguments, then we should see these corresponding values as the output. Let's go to Visual Studio Code to implement our code. First, let me copy and paste this initial code that Free Code Camp provides. And I'm going to Visual Studio Code to my Free Code Camp folder. I created a JavaScript file, Celsius to Fahrenheit, and I am going to paste the code and fix the indentation. Okay, I saved my file and now I am also going to change the spaces. By default, you will see four here, four spaces, but in JavaScript, we usually use two spaces. So we click right here, then select indent using spaces, and then we select two. Now, whenever we press the tab key on the keyboard, we will get two spaces instead of four. So that's very helpful to save us some time. Great. So we know that we have to use this formula. Let's analyze this formula. We have the degree Celsius, which is represented in our code by this parameter, the parameter that the function will take. And then we have to multiply that by nine fifths. For that, we will need to use two operators, the multiplication operator, which is the asterisk and the division operator, which is the slash. And then to that result, we're going to add 32. So let's implement this formula in our code. We have to assign it to this variable Fahrenheit. To assign a value to a variable, we use the assignment operator, which is the equal sign. And right here we have the variable declaration, which is now going to be a definition. First, we take degrees Celsius and we multiply it by nine fifths. That is the first thing that we have to do to implement this formula. And then, we have to add 32 to that result. 
Because of the order in which the operations will be performed, the precedence of these operators, the multiplication will be solved first and then we will add 32 to that result. But that is not immediately visible or immediately obvious visually, unless you know those precedence rules. So what I would recommend in this case would be adding some parentheses around this operation. So it's more obvious that this is going to be calculated first and then we're going to add 32. Great, so now we have the formula implemented. We go back to FreeCodeCamp's website and right here we can see the tests. First, we see convert Celsius to Fahrenheit passing the value zero. This should return a number. But what number should this return? Well, we see it right here. That function call should return the value 32. So let's see if we get that result. If we copy and paste this function call, for now we're going to delete this 30 argument that we have right here, the second function call. This already came with the code that we had initially on free code camp, but we're going to test all the different cases individually one by one in the order that they appear. Okay, so console.log because we want to see the result in the terminal. And then we're going to open our terminal and check the output. As a quick note, if you want to see the output of console.log in your terminal, you will need to install Node.js. I have a video on my channel where you can learn how to run JavaScript code in Visual Studio Code to see the output in your terminal. You may want to review it if you don't have Node.js already installed. Okay, so let's open the terminal and I am going to move this panel to the right so we can see the output. Okay, right here we have the code and right here we will see the output. We are automatically at my free code camp folder because I opened it right here in Visual Studio Code, so that will be the default path in the terminal. And in that case, I can run a command called node. I will be able to run my file celsius to fahrenheitjs This file that I have right here, you should write the name of the file that you're working with. If I press enter, voila, I see the value 32. So that is really awesome. If I pass zero here, I will see the value 32 as the output. Let me resize this so we can see this. Now we have another test case, which is minus 30. They should return the value minus 22. Let's see if this works. Minus 30, we save the file with control S or here on file, save. That is very important because otherwise you will not see a change in the output. And then let me give you a quick tip. If you want to run the same command that you just ran in your terminal, you can just press the up arrow and then press enter. And you will run that command again, which in this case prints minus 22. Exactly what we expected. You can see it right here. So this test was correct and this test was correct. Now let's check this with minus 10. We should get the value 14. Minus 10, we save the file and we run the command again and we see 14 as the output. Okay, awesome. And then if we check the value 20, we should get the value 68. We should get the value 68 and that is exactly what we get right here. So we're converting degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. And finally, the last test case is 30. This should print 86 as the output. If we change this to 30 and we run the command again, we get the value 86. So that's really, really great. All the tests are passing and that confirms that our code is working like we expected. To submit the coding challenge, I signed into my account. You can create an account for free at Free Code Camp and you can solve all of these challenges for free too. And for that, I'm going to copy 
with Control C or with right click, copy, and I'm going to paste my solution here. I'm going to allow sending text and images from my clipboard to FreeCodeCamp. And now, well, I see the output 86, but that really doesn't affect my solution. I can just delete this and submit my function and I will run the tests and see how they work. Yes, we have liftoff. We passed all the tests and now we can continue to our next coding challenge in the basic algorithm scripting course from the certification. Now you know how to solve this challenge of converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. Of course, this is just one way to solve this challenge. There are multiple ways to do this. For example, you could, instead of defining this variable Fahrenheit, you could return the value directly. That would be another option. But in this case, we were asked to assign the result to the variable Fahrenheit. So we have to follow that instruction and always know that there are multiple ways to solve every coding challenge. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you one way of doing that, but you can also experiment with your code and find new alternatives.